Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Dr. Mark Mancola. Hi, Mark. How are you doing, Don? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to talk to you. I literally have a million things written down, and I don't know exactly where I want to start, but I think I want to ask you, what is the difference between Eastern and Western medicine, in your Eastern, opinion? Eastern medicine is more more holistic. It's more involved in things like uh, the, the different parts of the body, different systems in the body seen separate. They're not seen as like one integrated thing. And it's like the Western world sees everything as, as one, one, one integrated thing. You're looking at, at the physicality but in Eastern medicine. You're looking at the liver, the kidney, the gallbladder, all different systems, all different, different worlds under themselves. And the objective is to take best information you can gather from a perspective of natural substances like herbs, homeopathic medicines, vitamins, minerals, uh, food supplements, things like that. Natural approaches to, to balancing the, the, the systems, the different chemistries, different systems out. When there's, when there's illness, there's imbalances in the, in the various systems of the body. You can have like an overactive or an underactive liver, kidney, gallbladder, spleen, lung, heart, and you want to balance them out. You take the overactive and you slow them down a little bit. You take the underactive and you give them a little nudge. That, that's how I describe that. Right. So do you think that inflammation is one of the biggest problems in the diet of Americans, at least? 72% of all, of all disease is inflammatory. 72%. So of all the different inflammatory conditions that exist in the system and in the human body, they're all 72% of them are inflammatory. It begins with foods. There are foods like peanuts, egg yolks, not egg whites, egg yolks, um, dairy products, red meats, sugars, things like that, that actually produce COX-2 hormones. Those COX-2 hormones produce arachidonic acids, fatty acids that actually sets up the production of inflammatory systems in the body, inflammatory chemistry in the body. It's very much, very much involved in the establishment of inflammation. It's food-based, it's all food-based. Gosh. So is that all in your book where you talk about uh, the diet? Yes. I've written, I've written eight books. I'm working on my eighth book right now. And all my books are talking about that stuff. And that, and you got interested in that because your uh, brother was sick, right? That's exactly right. My brother, my brother, when he was young, he was 35 years old, he had a heart attack at 35. And this is back when nobody knew that much about the corollary between diet, nutrition, exercise, stuff like that. They never thought about that stuff. So, I mean, I was really, really working really hard to help. I, I studied uh, a lot of the, the worthy available information at that time, which wasn't very much. I, I learned about foods, put them on a diet. Helped him with his with his, pro, his health program. He got a lot better. He got a lot better. That's awesome. Who who was your favorite author of of dietary? Was it like Dr. Ornish, or where where did you learn the most when you were studying about diet? I like Dr. Pavo Arola. Yeah, yeah, Arola, Arola. Dr. Pavo Arola. Pavo Arola is one of my favorite authors. One of my favorite uh, healers. He was very very special man. It's an amazing, wrote some amazing book. He's my favorite. Um, so, okay. What got you going down the path of miracles? Were you a spiritual person before that? Or do you even consider, um, miracles to be spiritual or religious at all? I, I not necessarily. And I, I think, I think it, for the past 35 years, I've worked with 60,000 patients and I've helped so many with stage four cancers, recover people from heart disease, recover people who are scheduled for surgery, stuff like that, never needed surgery. So we've had some amazing experiences, really amazing. But I think there's a, there's a couple of corollaries with all that. Number one, miracles are, are made by by us. You, know, you, have, you have miracles have four options. To um to, to make miracles is the greatest thing. That's the, that's the number one thing. But people can reject, they can accept, they can expect, or they can create miracles. I say you want to be careful if you're on the negative side of that. If you if you don't if you want to reject miracles, you're you're already one foot in the bucket. You have trouble. <laughs> trouble. So you want, if, you want, if you want to expect them, that's okay. But I'd rather accept them. I'd rather, I'm, I'm, if, if you want to accept them, rather it's okay. I'd rather expect them and, and produce them. Much better way to do it. Yeah. Well, we don't think we have as much control as what we do. Why is that? I think the key is we don't know who we are. We have an identity crisis. I think we're much, we're much broader. We're much more expansive. We're much more powerful than we think we are. We're so busy. We're so busy criticizing ourselves, feeling criticized by the world. The culture in which we live is, is very, very critical and it breeds self-critical nature. It's, it's not nice. Like they're not healthy enough. Not, not, it doesn't produce abundance. It produces lack. It produces disease. I think that, um, 
I just noticed early on that when I work with patients with a, in a compassionate, loving, excited way, in a positive way, and think po think positive thoughts for them, and work in a positive manner with them, they they get they get better. And I was like thrilled to to see that happen early on in my career. And I had so many I was reached out to so many people that grew so much and healed so so remarkably deep, remarkable deep healings and profound changes, transformations. And so I decided that I was going to really, I was going to make a study about it. I was going to work at it. I was going to spend some time developing this stuff, making sure that we could repeat the performance. We could actually teach people how to heal themselves. Have you um, convinced a lot of skeptics? At, like, did you have miracles happen to people that just were like, whatever, doctor? I think, I think if you see my movie, you'll really feel that. You'll feel that a lot. My movie, my movie tells the story beautifully. The movie is called The Way Miracles, and it's being streamed. Right now on um, Gaia, G A I Gaia Herbs, G A I, and I think the movie tells the story about about the whole process, you know. And okay. It's clear that we we we're doing special, something special here because we believe in we believe in our ability to do that, and then we pursue it. If you believe in your ability to do it and then pursue it, you're gonna have good luck. Good fortune. Yeah. Yeah. What do they say? Where energy flows. What is it? What's the saying? Something where your where your focus goes, energy flows, or whatever. That's, yeah, that's, that's exactly. Yeah. yeah, I need to see it. But I started reading the the foreword of your book because um, that's all I could get. But I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna buy it. Um, you had a, a pretty big thing happen for you when you collapsed and you were on your bathroom floor and you were just laying there. That was excruciating to read. I could not even imagine having lived that, just laying there contemplating. 14 hours. 14, 14 hours. It was terrible. But I mean, I, I was just, anyway, we were making the movie. We were working on the movie, producing doing the pre-production for the film. And of course, we were setting up interviews with patients who had been through recoveries and stuff like that. I never thought that I was going to be one of the patients in the story at that time. But I was a bit, I used to run and I used to jog in the woods a lot. You know, because it's rough. It's it's natural. It's just sort of a fun environment to, to run. I don't like running tracks or anything like that or treadmills. Right. I always do the woods and run. So I did that. I used to do that three, four times a week. And I ran long distances. But I mean, one time I got bit by a tick, by a deer tick in the woods. And mm -hmm. I got I got really sick instantly. I mean, I was sick overnight, overnight. And I was, I was not able to not able to keep my balance. Not not able to stand up. I was falling down. And it's really 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 worried about it. The long story short is I went through um, a period where I, I couldn't stand up at all and I was paralyzed. I had four, 14 hours in the bathroom floor. I fell on the bathroom floor and I was there 14 hours before my my, my son came and found me and gave me a lift, got me, got me out of there and into the hospital and stuff like that. So I spent, spent some time in the hospital and, and had to run all kinds of blood work and all that stuff. And it was Lyme disease. I had Lyme disease. And Lyme disease is a horrible thing. It's it's a terrible thing. There's there's 300,000 300, people a year that 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 get Lyme that contract Lyme disease. Three hundred thousand is a lot of people. I mean, I've I've certain, I've had patients have Lyme disease. I have some of them, a good friend, seventy one years old, who died from Lyme disease. Lyme disease can't kill you. There's no doubt about it. So, I mean, I I was paralyzed for two weeks, and I didn't know I didn't think I'd ever walk again. Mm -hmm. But I really I really geared my mind the same way I worked with my patients. Give my mind to my to myself, my healing self healing is all geared the same way that I give my give myself up for healing patients. Same story. Put a lot of energy into it, a lot of positive contemplation into it, a lot of visualization, a lot of hard work, a lot of diet, nutrition, which I always did well. I did all that stuff, and then I beat I beat the lot. I mean, I'm like eighty five percent clear, and I I still have occasional um, periods where I have, like it's a damp rainy day, I have a hard time walking. I joined swell, stuff like that, but 85 to 90 percent clear. And I did that without medication. Wow. Well, if you did decide to go the um Western medicine route, what would they do for you for Lyme disease? What do they not, not much? They they treat the symptoms. You know, Western medicine is, is not into treating the root of the to the problem. They're into mm -hmm. treating the symptoms of the problem. So they, they 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 take my symptoms and they probably put me on things that just work with the symptoms. Nope. Oh. No, did you see those balloons? I just had those balloons come. Where did they come? <laughs> I didn't even push anything. That's weird. I, mean, I, I just finished my story too. <laughs> wow, I don't know what the heck that was. Um, so does Lyme disease ever totally go away? 
a great question. And it really doesn't. It really doesn't. It does not go away. It's like your your body adapts to the to the antibodies. And after you adapt the antibodies, you, you can survive with, with, without being asymptomatic. But there are there are certain supplements that work work really well on it. I mean, first things first, it's a bacteria. Okay. You, 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 you treat it with antibiotics of some kind, whether it be natural or unnatural, and antibiotics. I did I did fifteen hundred uh 1100, 1100 actually. I did 1100 um, potency of um, colloidal silver, colloidal silver, 1100 parts per, parts per million. So I tried that. I drank about half an ounce a day, twice a day, something like that for weeks. Wow. It helped. It helped. It helped. It definitely helped. And the diet is important. You can't, you can't, you can't be eating bacterial foods, yeasted breads, nuts, peanuts, um, vinegar. Beer, wine, champagne, stuff like that. You got to avoid all that stuff. That stuff breeds bacteria. It'll take the bacteria that you have in your body and it'll expand it. Before you got bit by the tick, you were really healthy, weren't you? I uh, mint. I was, I was running marathons. I did that. was great shit. Incredible. So do you think if you hadn't been that you it probably would have killed you? Do you think having that health prior to that really is what saved you? I, mean, I think I think that made a difference. I think it made a difference. I think that it made a big difference. I think um, I, it gave me a little bit of residue, a little bit of reserve, I should say, reserve to build up. You know, reserve tank was full of great, great, resilient energy, really powerful, and a positive thinker too. So that helps. Hmm. Okay, so back to your movie and your book. Um, you have I don't want to say his name wrong. Is it Chopra or Chopra, Doctor Deepak? Right, Deepak Chopra. Okay, Chopra. Um, were you, did you like, were you a huge fan of his and Dr. Bruce Lipton? Were you fans of theirs before or yes, were I they? Yeah, I did. I read their books and liked, liked their work and I still have them in the movie. You definitely have to be like ready and in the right mindset to read those kinds of books because I got um, one of Dr. Lipton's one time and I just put it down. I was like, I can't wrap my head around this stuff. But then it's like, the next time I saw it and looked, it made so much more sense. It it just was like, okay, um, I'm ready to hear it now. I'm, I understand it better. I mean, a lot of what they talk about is physics, quantum, quantum physics, you know? Right. And that tends to be elusive for, for most people. The idea of talking about quantum physics is something that escapes most people's day-to-day -day mentality. Right. Uh, it's not common, not common knowledge. It's not simple thinking. It's com complicated thinking. It's, it's, it's miracle thinking. Beautiful, it's great capacity to expand your properties and your thought properties beyond the norm, and, and it's by it's by thinking that that extensively and that deeply and that powerfully that you can actually build more of a miraculous approach to your to your physical and your and your emotional and your mental bodies. You know, you you become more more miracle making. Mm -hmm. find that that stuff that that language sets you up for it. So you said that you are thinking, or you are going to be working on a second movie yeah we're meeting if there's a company from australia that's coming up to meet with me in march and start talking about it is it like a sequel or is it a brand new concept i think i think a little bit of both it's not not a sequel per se but it's going to be a little bit the same flavor okay uh do you meditate every day i do every morning every morning how long uh 30 to 40 minutes Whoa, that's a long time. Well, to it, me, it, like three or four minutes is a long time. <laughs> how do you how do you quiet your mind? How do you do that? I think you have to develop tension for it. Okay. You're not inclined, you know, we're not inclined to do that. There's different parts of the mind that we use, obviously. There's different parts of the mind that are more busy. Like I mean, we produce different brainwaves. And you produce um, brainwaves that are that are more, more beta. Beta brainwaves. Your 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 busy mind. It is your your mind is busy thinking and processing and and wondering and all that stuff. It's it's a busy mind. Beta is a very busy mind. Alpha is a quiet mind. Alpha starts to slow things down. Starts to to, to take into account the uh, the deeper part of the moment, uh, the, the deeper part of your moments. So I think alpha is, is really a good brainwave state to to meditate in. Um, and so too is delta. Delta is deeper deeper brain brainwave state than alpha. Alpha starts you off with a meditative mind and Delta really takes you full, full deep, deeply in. But I like Delta brain. I work with the Delta stuff a lot. 
Hmm. Um, you mentioned that you have a son. Do you just have the one child? No, two boys and a girl. Are they healthy? Yeah, my daughter works works with me here. Does she? Vanessa <laughs> is the heir apparent. Oh, awesome. Um, but did they learn a lot from you? Like, do they believe in all of this stuff? They do. They do. They definitely do. They're, they're, they're amazing kids. They're, they're very much into the process of natural natural medicine. Nick, Nick my oldest son, actually worked with, has worked with me on and off over the years. He worked for a while and then got out and worked back and forth. He and Vanessa, the two that worked with me, they've all, they've all developed similar approaches to life and similar consciousness development, things like that. Oh, that's great. So what's on your bucket list besides the ne the next book and the next movie? What do you want to do? Is there anything you still want to check off? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I've been doing a lot of um, workshops. I just did a workshop. I did a three-day workshop in the Bahamas. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so much fun. It's, it's nice in the winter too, especially nice in January. Right. And I'm going, I'm going back there next year. And I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm doing seminar workshops and seminars in, in April and that's going to be in North Carolina. Okay. Beautiful, there's a beautiful place in North Carolina. We're going to be there. The art of, let's call the art of living. Okay. Beautiful place. Beautiful place. Yeah. So you're going to be like up in the Blue Ridge mountains, aren't you? That, that's exactly where we're going to be. I was just there in October. It is special. so underrated. My God, it was gorgeous. Very special. Very special. I'm looking forward to it. And then, then we're going to be in New York at the uh, Omega Institute. And I think that's in June. The Omega Institute in June. So we have a lot of uh, slight upcoming seminars and workshops and things like that. And I'd like to do more in Europe. So I'm, going to try to, I'm trying to set some stuff up in Spain and Italy. Do you feel like people's minds are starting to open? Uh, whenever the, whenever I meet them, they are. And any place I go, any place that people show up, they're always very much ahead of the game. Yeah. Interested. That's amazing. So what, what is there a miracle that has stood out that something that you couldn't even hardly believe it, that somebody that was so sick that made a turnaround? You know, there's some amazing ones. I mean, the movie has, has like five or six stories in it. Okay. Story. One of them is in Parkinson's. And he was in part, he was sick with Parkinson's and he, he was really limited in his movement. His movements were so limited. He, he couldn't, he couldn't walk more than 10 feet at a time without falling down. Mm. He was really bad shape, and he he's running three miles a day now. Oh my gosh! Great example. And then I have um a woman who had breast cancer, stage stage three or stage four breast cancer. He's completely cancer free. Oh wow! I have got to see that movie. That's you know, amazing. I didn't even I didn't even realize I care for the elderly, and one of the ladies that I care for, she has Parkinson's, and I always thought that that was just shaking. I had no idea how much it affects so many other things. She has to do exercises just so that her face doesn't get, uh, you know, rigid or I, I don't know. I had no idea about any of that. Terrible, terrible. So I think that what I found in my work, there, are, there, there's no mechanical way to diagnose Parkinson's. There's no mechanical way to do it. No, there's no testing. That's that's blood test. None of that's the, no mechanized form of testing. They just have you do physical demonstrations like hey, the way you move your arms your hands your feet your legs mm -hmm. backwards forwards, stuff like that sideways and they check you that way and they determine if you have what they call parkinson's a lot of people have i think they're diagnosed with parkinson's have a virus have a, a virus that, that mimics parkinson's a lot of a lot of i see a lot of people every day who are diagnosed with parkinson's and they don't have parkinson's you kill the virus they get better wow a lot of breakthrough activity in our work tons of breakthrough activity how do you how do you kill a virus without antibiotics? No, antibiotics are for bacteria. Okay. And uh, antivirals, they don't use much. They and the world doesn't do much antivirals. They do some. There's a cycle here and stuff like that that we do. But the objective is to teach people to avoid foods that have a lot of arginine. The arginine feeds viruses. You have to be careful with your diet. Stay from chocolate, egg yolks, corn products. That's important. That, that'll help you avoid the arginine. The arginine really does a number on the viruses. Mm. You gotta watch what you eat. You gotta take care of yourself in other ways. And that's all in your book. Yep, it's all in the book. Perfect. So in, in is the interesting book. It's um, it takes the time to really explain what what our what our potentials are. Is is like literally we have. I, I believe we have an identity crisis. We think we're just just personalities, 
I just, we just, we, we, we reflect our name and our position in life and our payments in life. That, that doesn't go far enough. Yet. That we need to realize that we're, we're souls. We're, we're very deep souls. We have very incredible power, incredible capacity to make things happen. Incredible. I mean, to make miracles. And yeah, I think have if you, you always, me, have you always been deep like that? Soulful yep. like that? So it was, yep. Always. That's, that's who I am. I love that. So you like learning about the body, but it's more about the mind and the soul. Yeah, it's worth it's 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 worth, it's worth thinking of from the perspective of the wholeness, the holistic nature, body, mind, and spirit. We're we're all the above. We're all the above. And you know, it's like the the potential we have in our soul is so much greater than the potential we have, we exhibit in our ego. Ego ego doesn't have the power of the soul. The soul has imagined power, unlimited infinite power. Hmm. And people, when they come to see you, when they go to your um, seminars and retreats and stuff, are they learning all about that as well? Do they think they're coming there for all physical and then they find out it's, it's more soul level stuff? No, they, they know, you know, <laughs> if they follow your work, they know. <laughs> a lot of people follow it. A lot of people following it. No doubt about it. Yeah. Well, I'm so anxious. I am for sure going to see your movie and I'll put everything in the show notes too. So people can find you. I'm so excited for you. And this is just wonderful information to get out there. So I'm anxious to air this episode so that people can find out more about you. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time. I realize your work is very important and I know you're a busy guy. So I appreciate you taking thank the time you. to talk to me in my little show. I enjoyed it. You did it. You did a fun interview. Thank you so much. Oh, Mark. sure. Thank you so much. And I will be in touch for sure, Mark. And you, you can check anybody wants to check out their my work, my story, you can check out markmincoli.com. Okay, yeah, for sure. Is there anything else that you want to promote? You're more than welcome. Here's the platform. Do it. <laughs> uh, you can go to the website and everything's on there. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And um, we'll talk soon. Have a great day. Thank you. All right, you too. Bye bye.